Good morning, Journey. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Would you guys stand and sing with us?
Hey, before you take a seat, turn and introduce yourself and also tell that person what summer movie you're looking forward to seeing. Ready, go. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Journey. Uh, My name is Nolan, I'm one of the pastors here. And if you, maybe a friend brought you, or maybe you you did some research, you've been Googling us, you're looking for a church, and you find yourself new in here, or maybe you have no idea why you're here, but you just, you kind of took that step, and you're in here with us today. However you came here, and if you're new, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. And you also came, you came on like the perfect day, because Once a month, we do this thing we call First Step, and it's a welcome lunch for anybody who's new, and it's after service right in the plaza room. There's this big sign. You can't miss it right across the way, and we have awesome food. We answer some of the big questions that you have, right? And everybody, every time you're coming into a church or a community, you're wondering if it's like a children of the corn setup, and so we answer that. Is it it that setup? The answer is no, by the way. Um, but we're just glad that you're here, and we want to make sure that you come check that out. Um, so after service, make sure you go and grab like a coffee or something, then come back at 1230 right in the plaza room, and we would love to see you there. I have a few announcements for us today. The first one is coming up on Sunday, June 26 at 630, and it's called Dwell. And Dwell is this to put it in one sentence, it's experiencing the presence of God, kind of uninterrupted. On Sunday, we spend time in worship, we spend time in in prayer, we kind of cover all these different areas, and dwell is kind of an extended time of that. And what we know is that when we spend time in the presence of God, there's always more that he has for us. And so I want to invite you to come and check out dwell because there's all sorts of different elements that maybe you've never experienced before. And so we're going to get to see a video in just a minute that'll kind of show you a little bit more, but you don't have to sign up or anything, just mark it in your calendar and invite a friend and we'll see you there on June 26th. Well, the the last announcement that I have is the volunteer appreciation party. It's coming up this Wednesday, so everyone who volunteers, please come because we are doing this to appreciate you and celebrate you and maybe even to so that you can celebrate the brothers and sisters who serve alongside you. Does that make sense? So all of our volunteers, you guys coming? Yeah, awesome. All right, it's going to be this Wednesday night right outside in the tent. We're going to have food trucks and a good time, and we can't wait to celebrate you guys. Well, I'm going to invite the ushers to come down. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings. Um, You can do that, by the way, in the bags as they come along. If you're new, just you can let those pass. Uh, Or you can do it if you're digital. You can do it with the QR code or in the Journey app. And then if you're like a, a check person, in the seat back in front of you, there's envelopes. And then in the back, you can see these two wooden giving stands. You can give that way. But uh, this is the way that we kind of give back to God uh, a little bit of what he's, he's given us. And, and while they, they come down, we're going to watch two videos. The first one is a video of our last well. And you'll get kind of a sense of what it's about. Uh, it's something, too, to experience. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll get to see see what it looks like. And then also, we're going to be introing our new series, The End.
<laughs> That's trippy, huh? It's kind of like the beginning of a movie that's either going to be like Blade Runner or Truman Show, like something in there. So, all right. Is that the third obscure movie reference of the day? Anyways, uh, hey, thanks for coming. My name's Ed, and we're glad you're here. So, are you guys all right? Yeah. Yeah? You're good? Good. Um, <clears throat> uh, we're going to start with some prayer. And, uh, you know, like sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we... It's just really obvious, super obvious we should pray for stuff. And sometimes we're uh, led to pray for stuff that might not be quite as obvious. And, uh, um, uh, and sometimes it's because it's personal. You know, for me, it's per- this week I'm going to just indulge, ask you to, to pray with me. Um, there, you might have heard there, there was a shooting you're like, well, yeah, of course, there's a shooting. Isn't that sad? You know, it's like there's, every week there's a shooting. So how much church do we do praying about shootings, right? But uh, there was one in Ames, Iowa, you know? Um, did you hear about that, sadly? And uh, it was out, it, it wasn't of the same character, randomness of this, but, um, but uh, it's, uh, I, I've spoken at that church. I know those guys. So some of them are really good friends of mine. They, there's a, it happened outside of, they have, they have one of the coolest college ministries. Iowa, Ames, Iowa is where Iowa State University is. And uh, it's like a college town. They, they have like uh, this thing, this Thursday night, I spoke there. They do the Thursday night. I came in and did, did a couple of retreats for them. So you come and speak to all the kids on Thursday. There's like a thousand kids, 1,200 kids. At not, and that's not an exaggeration. They're, it's really, really cool. And uh, um, and then they do the retreat. And uh, in fact, uh, okay, I was going to tell you a story, but I'm going to hold, hold just for time's sake. Um, but uh, there was some, there was a shooting there. Three people were killed, and uh, and and I, you know, was texting some friends of mine back there. And uh, and there's and even in the midst of of this evil tragedy, uh, there there was the mercy of God. I wish I, I wish I had time to. God was restraining that evil. It, it could have been so much worse. Um, so I, anyways, I'm just going to just leave it at that. All right. So uh, are you guys okay with us praying for our fellow church? The church is called Cornerstone Church. I tried to put something on uh, f- from the Journey Instagram onto my f- account, and I screwed it up, of course. But So, so I was hoping you get your praying for it, but hopefully you're following journey on all the social media platforms. So why don't, why don't we stand up? We'll pray for each other. We'll pray for this church. Are you guys good with us? Yeah, yeah I would think so, right? If, there, if this was us, we would want our friends praying for us, right? Around the, yes? And uh, so, um, and, uh, and it's, you know, for, like I said, for me, these are people I know and love, and, uh, and you'd love them too. You'd love them too if you knew them. They're, 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 it's a great church, a fantastic church doing a great job. So, um, and why don't you bow in prayer, just bow your head or whatever you do. Maybe you don't, maybe you lift up your hands, however you pray. And uh, we're going to pray for this. And then we're going to pray for each other and pray, f- pray over this place. Does that sound like a good plan? So God, uh, together, we, uh, we pray for Cornerstone Community Church in Ames, Iowa. And uh, all the leaders, the pastors and leadership there as, you know, they're probably, it's time, they're probably in their second service right now. And we can only imagine what a tough service it is. The weekend after uh, three of their, their kids are killed uh, in, in this tragic thing right there on the church campus. And um, God, we pray that the Holy Spirit would be so thick and so obviously present, so powerfully present in all of the miracle of comfort that you do when we are experiencing deep loss and, uh, and confusion and darkness has come against us. We pray for the hope and light of the gospel to cut through that darkness. And we pray in Jesus' name, just like you told us, Jesus, Lead us not into trials and temptations, but deliver us 
from the evil one. And so we pray that over us and our community, over every church all over the world right now as they gather. And uh, then we, um, we pray over each other. God, we, uh, we're not showing up at church like as some kind of a look how righteous I am act. We're like the ones that admit that we're screwed up, that admit that we need help, that admit that we, we need you, God. I, I guess that makes us kind of smart in some ways, but God, that's not why we're here. We're here to just say, uh, meet us in our area of brokenness and need. And God, I pray that even today, that this, this thing in this X electronic store, this, in this building here, that the reign of God would manifest itself, that the reign of heaven would come over. Right now, I pray the wind of God blow over this place. And we pray, those of you that need a physical healing, raise your hand if that's you. Those of you that need a physical healing, we pray that you be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Maybe afterwards when our prayer team prays for you, but we don't have, you know, God can do it before anyone does anything, right? So just be healed in Jesus' name. And there's um, some of you that, that what you need is God to cut through a dark cloud of depression and anxiety and maybe even, maybe even suicidal thoughts in your head. And you don't have to raise your hand, but you might want to just kind of nod at me and say, yeah, that's me. Include me in that prayer. God, we pray that, again, the light and hope of the gospel to cut through, to pierce the darkness. We pray, Lord, you told us we could come to you, and it's like coming to a throne of grace, and we find help to a God who understands us who gets us. So I pray, God, that we, those of us right here in this room, those of us online, as we bump into each other, either right here or down the road, that that we would understand that these encounters are critical because all of us are fighting great battles. In Jesus' name, we pray for your strength. And all God's people said, Amen. Why don't you uh, say, just greet two or three more people, if you don't mind. It's just, I don't know how else to transition. Yeah. Thank you. So, seriously, thanks, thanks for doing that with me. And you guys know this, right? Um, that, that, means, uh, that means a lot to people, you know? Knowing that, that people that don't know them uh, at a church that's seven states away are praying for them, that, you just need to know that means something to them. And uh, so thanks, thanks for doing that. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, let me reiterate what Nolan was iterating up here. Uh, uh, we'd love to have you at First Step um, it's, it's a great lunch. Is that you out there, Julie? Do we have room for people? Yes, we can take you. So sometimes it fills up, uh, but usually we'll just take, even if it's full, we'll find a place for you. And we always, there's plenty of awesome food. We'd love to have you there. And just, if you're, if you're kind of, if you've never been to First Step, uh, or if you're kind of new here, or, or not new, but you've just never been there, you should go. And uh, it's, it's lunch, and we'd love to have you and just explain what's going on here. So um, <clears throat> when you came in, uh, you got a program, right? And that same stuff is on the, that same thing is on the Journey app. And uh, I'm, it's weird. I'm standing up. It's been a month. It's, it's kind of, it was kind of nice to sit and uh, chat. A lot of you guys said you really liked that format and liked the getting your questions answered rather than the stuff that I think you want to talk about. So... Uh, Anyways, um, so you know you, you had your month. Now it's over, and now I'm back in charge, and it feels good. So, uh, but it, this series is kind of uh, honestly, it's in the spirit of giving the people what they want. Because like several of the questions that came in, several of them were about end times stuff, 
and about uh, the last days. And then some of them sounded like this. How come we never talk about this? Other churches, they talk about it all the time. In fact, uh, friends of ours right down the freeway there, I was surprised to learn uh, uh, they're, they're right there in the same. It always makes me feel good when churches independently come up and decide this is what God wants us to talk about. But uh, um, the deal is, Sometimes uh, I just want to be popular. And so that's why we're doing this series. But uh, it, here's the other deal. Like, if you, those of you that are like longtime journey people, you might be, here's what you might be thinking like right now. You might be going, yeah, how come we don't talk about that? I mean, it, like, what is the deal with that? And there's, there's a lot of reasons for that. But I'll tell you, I think that, that I, I, I know more the reason why, like, numerous ones of you like we're asking to talk about this because like this is true now and it's been true like for the last 2,000 years at various points in times of uh, let's call it tumult when things are tumultuous when things seem crazy people start asking is this some kind of apocalyptic something is this is this something about the end? Because things are nuts. Like when, when there's lots of change and, there's, and, and when that, like when there's lots of change and none of it's good. You know what I mean? Like that's us right now, right? The, it's, it's hard in some ways to even recognize the world. If, if, what if you were in a coma for the last three years and you woke up today, you would go, no bleeping way. How long have I been out anyways, right? Lots of change. You know, I don't like most of it, right? And the world seems nuts. And you're like, you no longer recognize the world around you. And you're like, ah, what? It, it starts, you start asking these questions, right? And you might be saying stuff like, doesn't the Bible say uh, something about this? Or, and I've had several of you say to me, yeah, it, this is like clearly the, the, this verse in the Bible and that, right? This is it. Well, for the next four weeks, we're going to answer that question. Now, here's the thing. The series could be like 40 weeks or 80 weeks. It's, it, there's a lot of data here and a lot of stuff. Like, you know, if you're brand new to this, um, you're going to be just fine. If you've been around a while and think, okay, this is what we should be talking about. And if, especially if you're thinking, I know what they're going to talk about. I've heard these before. Um, hang on for just a second. You might get a slightly different take than what you're expecting. And so what we're gonna, what I thought we'd start off with is if we just have a little taste, just like of the million things in the Bible and millions in exaggeration, but of the lots of things in the Bible that like talk about this, here's, I just thought, let's pick one passage that, that kind of, just, just so you can kind of actually enter in and not just have Ed, you know, kind of give you a verse here and a verse here. Here's Peter. And there's two letters that Peter himself wrote. He's the source, most likely, of the Gospel of Mark. But there's two things that he himself penned, First and Second Peter. And they're wildly different books. They feel different. The Greek's way different in both of them. The English is different for that in that manner, too. Um, probably because he used different dudes to like transcribe it for him. That's When you think of Peter and Paul writing these books, probably they're not like writing them, they're probably dictating them, and there's a guy writing them. That's how you did it in the ancient world most of the time. But, um, so, and, but the content is way different. In, this, in Second Peter, Peter's kind of, it's kind of dark, and it's about this stuff. So let's just look at, at like a, a, one paragraph. Is that all right? Yes? Yeah. Good, good, all right. Here we go, 2 Peter 3. It'll be on the screen if you want to pull it up on your phone or use an actual Bible, whatever you want to do. But here it is. This is now, beloved, Peter's writing here, the second letter I am writing to you in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of a reminder. I'm trying to remind you of stuff that I've already talked about. That's the idea. That you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandments of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Because they're about to be gone. There's that, that generation is, is kind of at the end. And so he's saying, don't forget this stuff. 
No, don't forget the stuff that you've got written. Yay, we've got thousands and thousands of manuscripts, literally, of that. But also, like, there, there's, like, the stuff that was said that nobody wrote down. Remember that. And there's different places you can find that. There's a document called the Didache. There's the Apostles' Creed, all that stuff, right? Which aren't Bible, but they're kind of give you an idea. Then he goes, now, here's end time stuff. Know this, first of all, that in the last days, in the eschaton hemera, right? The last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust and saying, oh yeah, where's the promise of his coming? You know, like kind of making fun, going, oh yeah, you guys talk about this. Well, here's what they say. For ever since the fathers fell asleep, you know, for uh, people have been saying this forever, they all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. It's like the, the talking head says, same as it ever was, right? That, like you guys in the end times, like, dude, come on. It's just like, every, you know, everybody thinks that. It's just, but you know, it's going to be the same tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. Peter says, when they think this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed. Isn't it funny that now we know this? Even like 30, 40 years ago, people didn't understand. Like there wasn't, they didn't understand the, the big bang, that there was, that this thing you're in now, it did not always exist. Time and space, there was a moment it's a long time ago, but there was a moment when it came into existence. And the Bible says, here's why it came into existence, because God spoke it into existence. So don't go with this, oh, it's just always been, everything's the same. No, it's, it's even scientifically, that's not true. But Peter goes on to say that by the word of, the God, by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed being flooded with water. The Bible tells a story about people saying things are just going to go on forever. I mean, today, tomorrow, the next day, it's all going to be the same. And this was, now, I don't have time to get into or think about like what was going on here. But when you read the first parts of the Bible and they have these genealogies and the parts where they tell you how long people lived, they lived crazy long lives. And, and again, we'll maybe get into that some other time or you can ask me about that. But uh, so they lived all kind of, like a long time. And so, you know, it, it's one thing for us to just think, ah, things are gonna go on forever. But what if our average age like of death was 350? You know what I mean? Like you could really see how people be tempted to kind of just assume everything is going on. And then it says, but, but then, then the hammer dropped and there was this thing called the flood. Remember the ark and the animals and all that stuff, right? He says, but by his word, the present heavens and earth, here's, here's why there's not one of those right now, right? Because it's not like we're way better than them. It's not like, you know, God judged them. It's not like we've been good and so God's being nice. It says, here's what's happening, that by his word, by God's word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved because there's another judgment coming that's gonna look more like fire than water, kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly people. But do not let this one fact escape your notice. See, here's what you gotta understand about time, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. If you've been a Christ follower very long, you've probably already figured out that God's sense of timing and yours don't seem to be the same, right? Have you noticed that? It's like, it's, and usually it's the, the deal where we're going, okay, God, uh, here's, what, here's my prayer. Can, would you do this, please? And you're like, and I would like it done ASAP. Like maybe Tuesday, can we make sure it's done by Tuesday? Because I'm really tired of worrying about this. I need my kid to turn around and come to his senses and this is keeping me up at night, so Tuesday. Can we do Tuesday? And you know how that goes, right? The Lord is not slow. Let's keep reading. The Lord is not slow about his promises. This is not God being slow. As some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. That's a key. Notice right in the middle of this, 
God's heart is this, is that everybody turns to him. God doesn't desire to judge or punish anybody. If you get this picture, when you, when you think about the end times, that God is just storing up. He's like, oh, just me, how much longer till I just, I can't, uh, uh, man, when I see him, I am, uh, you, uh, you know, there, not, one, not one ounce of God is like that. Not one ounce. God is wishing that no one perishes. If you insist on perishing, you can. He's, he's gonna let you. If the world insists on going, bleep you, God, we want, we want to run our own show. We're more with, whether, even though we don't necessarily say this, we're more with that devil guy that you don't like than you. God's going to eventually say, all right, have at it. But, no, let me finish this. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. We're not sure exactly what that means because as you keep reading, it's not like this earth is gonna disappear, but there's gonna be some purification of it big time. There's something wrong in the physical world because of sin. There's like a curse on the earth that where the, are the earth and the physical world hurts us. There's death everywhere. There's, there's, all, there's something fundamentally wrong and that will be fixed. And who knows if God is going down to the molecular or the atomic level or what, but God is gonna do what it takes to fix it. Now, look at verse 11. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? And then let me read a couple more. Looking for, this is trippy. I, boy, this would be fun just to do this as a message. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. Whoa, you mean we can speed this up? The day of God because of that which the heavens will be destroyed by burning elements. There we go with the melting again and tense seed. But according to his promise, see here's why we know it's not like a destruction of the physical world or the earth itself. But according to his promise, we're looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. All right. Now, there's a little taste of one of the many passages in the Bible that, that kind of lay out like kind of some end times, like an end times riff. OK, did you right? So there's a lot of stuff there. This is today's message. We're not going through all that. But the reason I picked this one is because like for this series, the next four messages in the month of June, in this series, there's a verse in here that is like our anchor verse. Like this is our, like the, this is our con conceptual like anchor as it were. Like the, the rest of these messages are, are, are like an, a, 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 an explanation of verse 11. Can you guys throw that on there? Look at this. How about if we read it? Are you guys okay with that? Can we read it together? Let's do this. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Now, here's, you've probably known, if, if, you're, if you're really like new to the, this whole church world, God, Jesus, Bible, and all that stuff, maybe you haven't. But if you've been around, like if, you, if you're a longtime church goer, and you've been around other longtime churchgoers, there seems to be some people that really dig this kind of end time stuff. They talk about it a lot. They think about it a lot. They, they, they watch the news thinking, oh yeah, that's it. And they start connecting stuff. Not saying anything good or bad about that. But there's, this, there's kind of, there's a little bit of a, a tightrope walking that I'm, that I think what Peter is asking us to do. And verse 11 is, you know that like in, in a circus with a tightrope, you know that sometimes the guy has the big pole like that as he walks on that? You guys remember, you know, you've seen one of those, right? The, verse 11, that's your pole. That's your thing that keeps you like on the wire and from falling down and there's no net. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's a net. Um, but he says, listen, right in the middle of this, Peter says, Here's the point, right? 
since all these things, if, if you think this, if you believe what I just said, Peter talking now, there's a question that you should ask yourself. Like, what adjustments, tapas de huparkon is the Greek phrase, or huparkane. He says, what, what kind of people, sh- is it necessary, that's the actual word, is it necessary for you to be if you believe that? For example, if, if you believed that, you know, like if you believed that the economy is going to completely collapse, right? Like there's commercials on TV about that, you know what I mean? And they're trying to sell you usually commodities, you know, gold or silver or whatever. And you're like, and I think Pat Boone is in, in on that, right? But uh, <laughs> there's a name you haven't heard in a while. And, and uh, but it's like, if you think that, if you really think that, you might want to make a few adjustments here or there, right? And that's what Peter's saying is it's, it, it, see, a lot of us, like what you want, the reason you like this series is kind of like, do you guys remember this toy, this thing, the Magic 8-Ball? And you remember this at parties? We are going to bring in a, a Ouija board up here, but I didn't want anyone getting demon-possessed. <laughs> Don't play with those. That's not fun. It's, it's not a joke. Don't do that. But this, this is a toy, I think. Um, uh, Zool. But uh, anyways, it's a Ghostbuster reference. But uh, I shouldn't have done that. But what you do, right, is you would, uh, you would ask somebody a question and then they would have to turn the eight ball over and then there's, uh, you know, there's like different answers. Like, uh, all right, um, will this message end on time? Not a chance. That's what it says right there. All right. All right. There. See, I, so, see, here's an interesting factoid. In, in the Bible, all kinds, every variety of fortune telling is, is prohibited. Strongly so. Strongly so. Uh, uh, sooth saying palm reading, uh, Ouija, the stuff that would be like Ouija board, necromancy, communicating with the dead or trying to. You know, that's like strictly, it's, it's considered dangerous and no bueno, right? And there's one of the reasons for that is that there is something, oh, that's funny. There's something uh, in us that our desire to know the future is a refusal to walk by faith. All right, I'm taking this trip. Am I going to be okay? All right. The plane will crash. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, uh, I'm just doesn't say that. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't joke about stuff like that. But the, God is saying, no, we walk by faith and not by sight. Us, us, even us Christ followers, us humans, we want information. We want God to say, okay, this will work out fine. God, I'm, I'm going to take this job. Is it, 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 how's it going to go? He says, well, every, it's not, see, every now and then, God will specifically lead you. Don't do that. Definitely do that. When he does, he almost never tells you why, in my experience. God never says, okay, don't take that job because, uh, you, you, the boss seems nice, but he's actually a jerk, and he he's, uh, he's doesn't pay. In the end, you're going to work and not get paid. It's like, it never happens like that, right? It's just, you just feel led. You feel like the peace of God leading you somewhere. Does that make sense? And so, so this, this is not that. Like some of us think, yeah, but in the Bible, it tells us what's going to happen. Ooh, sort of. Like, so like when we do this series... Of course, the, the, now this is more f- for you guys who have been around church a while. If, if you're not new, this might, if you're new, this might not be as funny. But um, of course, if you're going to teach on this, you got to have a chart, right? What kind of, what kind of two-bit like church would you be if you taught on this and didn't have a chart, right? So, and then because the, the, the point is to argue about what goes on the chart and where and what you connect it with in current events, right? That's, that's the whole point of this, right? That's the fun of this. Well, that is this, right? 
Not, not, not every chart is this, but I'm just saying that a lot, I think what motivates that a lot of times is this. And perhaps there's another chart. We're going to have a chart. Don't, don't get me wrong. But uh, here's, here's our chart. You'll notice it doesn't, you notice it's not real awesome looking, but it is a chart, right? You see, chart-like characteristics of our chart. Can get that camera over there. There you go. Come on. You got to get the chart in there. All right. So for our friends online. So here's our chart. And uh, you'll notice it, it's not like a, a timeline. You know what I mean? It's, it's something a little different than that. Now, here's what, here's, the, here's what I will sell to you as the advantages or the selling points, the, the, uh, the features of our chart as opposed to other charts you might have seen. The features are you can actually remember everything on this chart, all right? That's, it's only going to have four words, and that's, that's one good feature. Here's the other feature of our chart is everything on this chart you can take to the bank. This, this chart represents at least some of the stuff that virtually every person, every legit person that teaches and studies the Bible, and, and you, there, this is the stuff that is like, boom, it's solid, it's in there. There's, there's, no, you, this, there's no Nostradamus in this. This is just, just boom, this, you can't miss this. Uh, read the New Testament, you're going to get at least these four. Now, I'm not saying that everything about the end times is on this chart. That's the downside of this chart. It is kind of a stripped model, you know, kind of, you know, it's not, the, it's not like a model home that you buy with all the furniture already in it. This is more of the, the basic thing, all right? Ready? So here we go. Here's the first thing on the chart, ready? Here's the anchor point. Here it is, Jesus. We're going to just put J or maybe to annoy some of you, I'm going to put X all right, and uh, Christos, that's his name in Greek. <laughs> but I, I love just annoying you. Anyways, so Jesus, here it is. Jesus will return. There you go, right? If you're taking notes, you might want to write this down. Or it's going to come on the screen. You might want to take a picture of that afterwards. Jesus will return. In Acts, the first thing as when Jesus ascends on the Ascension Day before Pentecost. Today, I believe, is Pentecost Sunday, right? The first thing the angel, the Jesus, that happens is Jesus ascends. I did a message on this, and it's, it's not like he was like a balloon that you let go, and you're like, oh, I can still see him. No, it's, it, it wasn't like that. <laughs> but he, he did, I knew something. But immediately, they're like looking around going, Dude, what? This is so trippy. And an angel appears and says, why are you guys doing that? This same Jesus, this same Jesus will come in just the same way. Jesus will return. Before the, before the church even started, they were already saying, one of our anchor points is that Jesus will return. All right, here's the second point of the chart. Ready? Jesus will reign, R-E-I-G-N. Jesus will reign. Our main prayer, like the guts of our prayer, the Lord's prayer, like our prayer, like the, that prayer revolves around the request, say it with me, thy kingdom and where? Just like it is in heaven. And that's what we're fighting for every day. That's what we're fighting for at every turn. That's when we encounter somebody, what we need to do is going, I, I am a warrior for the reign of heaven in their life. Hell has reigned long enough in their life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rep heaven as hard as I can. That's why when we pray for people, yeah, why not, right? And that's why when we pray for people, we don't have to labor over, well, maybe this affliction is from God and maybe God wants them to be sick. And so, for one, that, that's, that's got all kinds of problems. But here's, here's what we do. What, what would it look like if Jesus was reigning, like in this moment and in this spot and in their lives? What would that look like? Okay, that, if you go, I don't know what the will of God is to pray. Well, what would it look like if, if 
his will was done on earth, like this body here, earth, what would it look like if, if the will of God was done in this earth? There wouldn't be cancer. I don't you think there's going to be cancer in heaven. Duh, right? Is there going to be heart failure? Is there going to be like estrangement and, and addictions? And no, so you know how to, to pray, right? At least somewhat. Sometimes you get a little more insight. Are, are you with me? So, but here's the thing. Here's, here's right now we're fighting for this. And I don't want to discourage us or anything, but it feels, does, not, does it not feel like you win some and you lose some, right? And I don't like that because some of these losses aren't like little, like, oh, well, they're like, ah, right? Then the seventh angel sounded. There were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. That sounds good, right? So here's your anchor points. Jesus will return. Jesus will reign. There are no Christ followers that believe, well, there, if you don't, don't believe the Bible, you're not a Christ follower, but there's nobody that reads the Bible that can miss that. That's, this isn't controversial. This isn't like only, you know, these, this denomination believes this. Every, if you suck with the Bible, this is like, boom. This is, you know, now like there's all kinds of like, well, when and how and what and three, you know, what color and all that stuff, it, it, whatever. Now there's two, like, do you guys remember, uh, you gotta be old to remember this. Do you, do you guys remember being in English class and having to diagram a sentence? Anybody? All right. Raise your hand if you ever had to do that. All right, keep, come on, hands up if you've diagrammed a sentence. All right, keep your hand up if, if you're under 40. I'm just thinking if there's any, did you have to diagram a sentence? You did? Oh, okay, all right, all right. Anybody else, did you have to? All right, any, you, get, you had to? Wow. Oh. You know, I, I did, and then do um, you know when it comes in real handy when you're learning Greek? <laughs> it's like super handy, and then we're and then it's like awesome. But see, so most people today, because we don't have to do that, we, we don't know like like this is the, you could think of it like this if you're a sentence diagram, or if you have any recollection of this. This is the predicate, all right. This this and this is the object, right? Subject object, all right. But then these are kind of like you could think of this adverb and. Adjective, like these are the modifiers, as it were. So here's the other two in our chart. So we got a good, so far so good on the chart, right? Nice chart we got going. All right, here we go. Here's, here's two characteristics of all this stuff, right? One, sadly, is tribulation, right? We'll just call it tribulation, trib, right there. That's, that's a feature of our chart, too. Super clear. It's very in the Bible. Wish it wasn't, but it is. And the other is this one. This, word's, this, this word isn't in there, but the concept is everywhere. Um, it's imminence with an I. Imminence. Is that E? No, okay. Imminence. That, that is the, hey, Jesus, when's this going to happen? It's not for you to know. Uh, look, now this is mysterious. Jesus says, I don't even know. Whoa, right? Whoa. Sure Whoa. Understand. Well, my watch just told me she didn't understand something. So, <laughs> I have a great joke, and my wife's out of town, but she might be watching. So, it's, it's about women bossing me around, and uh, now I have another one. So, but I'm not going to tell the joke. So, so there's our chart, and can you guys put it on the screen one more time the completed chart? Jesus will return. Jesus will reign. Here's how this is going to work in terms of the next four weeks. This is next week, the imminence one. And then Jesus will return. That's the third week of the message. And then the, and we're going to wrap up with Jesus will reign. This is going to be fun, right? Jesus is going to make all things right. And it's going to be amazing. And we're longing for that day. But today, <laughs> we're going to get this over with. Today is tribulation weekend, right? So uh, you're like, hey, this, this is hell week, right? No, not, not really. 
but kind of, right? What sort of people ought you to be? If you believe any of this stuff, if you believe the Bible, then what kind of person ought you to be, right? Let me just show you some Bible stuff here. Here's 2, Peter, 2 Timothy 3.1. But know this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. The word difficult there, it, it, you could translate it fierce times. Harsh times will come. You're thinking, Ed, what does that mean? It means that in the last days, difficult times will come. That's easy, right? Duh. I, I mean, I don't like it, but I, it's not hard to understand, right? Difficult times will come. Whatever that means, like in terms of whatever the last days are, when they come, things will get difficult. That same passage, if you kept reason, reading, will say that things will get worse and worse. The evil men and imposters will grow, go, go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's in 2 Tim 3. Let me give you another Bible verse. This is Jesus in what's called, if you want to the name for it, it's called the Olivet Discourse. Jesus gave it on the Mount of Olives. And right on the week that he was in Holy Week, he gave this teaching. And it's about, now here's the thing, if you try to read this, which you should, hopefully you read, you read the Gospels, right? This chapter is got, this, this has two this is look, it's like Jesus looking at the future and he sees this near future and he sees this less near future, right? And he's looking at it and you got to read, the interpreters got to read it going, which thing is he talking about? Does that make sense? That's, you go, well, why can't it be easy? I don't know. It's not just, you just got to work at it, right? So like the main thing Jesus is talking about in this discourse is the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. In 70 AD, the emperor Titus came and blotted Jerusalem. And it, there was a, it was at the end of a, a war, a, a rebellion war. And you can read all about it in uh, Josephus's Wars of the Jews. It's, it's super sad to read it. It's just because he de chronicles the, the, the ugh, it's just, it, it's really depressing, but it's, <laughs> you should read it. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but that's primarily what he's talking about. There's, uh, that's commemorated by our Jewish friends. You guys ever heard of a holiday called Tish B'Av? It's, uh, anyways, it's, it's not like one of the main ones, but it's like the, the, the mourning for the destruction of the temple. All right, so the other thing, though, that Jesus is talking about is like the last days, like the end of days, when time is wrapping up, when his return is, is nigh, as it says in the old translations. And Jesus says there... One of the things he says is for there, Matthew 24, 21, for there will be a great tribulation, a thlipsis megale, right? That's a mega thlipsis. Thlipsis is trial or temptation. There will be a great tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of the wor world until now, nor ever will. So there's going to be a great tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world. It's really quiet in here. Yeah, right, yeah, no me gusta. But, uh, and then here's another one, Revelation 7, 14. I said to him, my Lord, uh, uh, or let me give you the context. So John, the book of Revelation is John, and he's kind of hanging out with this angel person. And they, a lot of it's him reporting what he sees, and sometimes he's interacting with this angelic being. And so the angel asks him questions. There's these people that are, John is up and is having this vision in heaven. And there's these people that are getting these white robes put on him. And he goes, who are these people? And, and the angel asks John that. And he goes, I don't know. You tell me. And, and the angel says, these are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation. There are people that have been martyred in this period called the great tribulation. So we go from difficult times to a great tribulation to taste flipsos, taste megales, the great tribulation. So there's the thing that marks the return of Jesus or the drawing near of it that is referred to as some kind of a unique tribulation. Now for us, the tough thing is 
Every, like everybody experiences hard times in life. You, you, your body, you get old, you, you, you break down, you, people you love die, you, things happen, you get hurt, you lose your job, you, uh, yeah, 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 right? Uh, like everybody experiences this stuff. But what we have yet to experience, and this makes it weird for us, this is, this is why when you read the Bible, you have to be aware of the fact that the place you're coming from is markedly different from the place that the guys who were originally writing and reading this were coming from. Does that make sense? And so you got to factor that in. So the expectation that we have of religious freedom, nobody, nobody had that. None of them. Oh, well, we have our rights. <laughs> they didn't have any rights, right? The expectation that, um, that society should be totally cool with my Jesus following. They hoped, but they didn't have that. Does it make sense? So their, their, their basic starting point is different. So for us to get what the Bible's trying to tell us, we got to kind of adjust a little bit and try to, to, to look at it like from a different angle. Entiende? You getting this? All right, so here's the thing. It says that, now see, it says to people that had experienced periodic outbreaks of persecution. Like if you read the book of Hebrews, like those people had, at one point, the government decided we don't like these Christians and they seized their property and took their stuff and they lost their jobs and things like that, right? So they'd already experienced some of this. And so, but it says that in the last days, there will be a, a specific thing Isaiah 13, 9, behold, the day of the Lord is coming. And it says, thus, I will punish the world for its evil, God speaking, and the wicked for their in iniquity. So here's, I think I forgot to give you a fill in at the beginning. The last days, when we talk about tribulation, the last days will be marked by tribulation, duh, i.e. a growing hostility to God and his people. And that's growing from what they were experiencing. That's a little different than growing from, from what we've experienced. See, we, some of us think, yeah, I've, I, I've been persecuted. No, you've, you've had your feelings hurt. You know what I mean? I, I get it. Somebody called you a booger or something like that. And you're like, oh, I can't believe that's a curse. You, that's not persecution, right? Let's get real. Let's not use that word for what now maybe you have maybe you've lost something but here's the other thing that will be different about tribulation and the tribulation ready here's the other difference so a there'll be just more hostility towards god and his people and b the other thing is this is that God will be judging the world. And when you do that, when you hear that, if the mental picture that I think is the best one is not God going and then going and just kind of just going nuts on stuff. The best picture is God restraining or, or removing his restraint of evil. Of, of him saying, all right, you wanted me out of the world. You wanted to do your thing. Okay, go ahead. And so you see in the book of Revelation, all this quasi natural phenomena of, of the food sources going bad and economy going south and people not being able to feed. And, and like when evil takes over, that's what it looks like. See, all the blessings of life Today, like Paul said to the in Lystra when he's preaching, like the rains from heaven and the like, and, and when we just see a little disruption in this, we freak out, right? Like the baby formula thing. It's like if God wasn't at work, that would be widespread all the time. And you see that in parts of the world. Like there's parts of the Horn of Africa where they keep having these bouts with widespread famine. And God will say, okay, okay. Here, have at it. I, I, that's kind of what judgment looks like. Maybe not in full, but that's, 
I think, a good picture of it. Now, if you're saying to yourself right now, uh, Ed, I don't know if you know this, but I come to church to feel better, not worse. <laughs> and uh, so far, uh, I'm not feeling much better. All right, so let me help you with that. Why, why is this anything like good news? Well, Jesus, as usual, he's the guy to explain it to us. Remember I talked about the Olivet Discourse, that thing in Matthew 2. In Luke 21, same thing, only Luke's giving you his details on it. Jesus says this, but when these things begin to take place, all this stuff and da-da-da, straighten up, lift up your head because your redemption is drawing near. See, the good news, listen, hostility, the hostility that you, we will experience does not mean all is lost. The hostility, what it does mean is that we've almost won. It's not like we, oh man, we, all is lost. No, we've almost won. God already told us this is what's gonna happen. So when you see this happen, go, sweet, we've almost won. Listen, don't be the jerk that like when stuff goes bad, it's like, this is awesome. That means Christ is coming soon. No, we always work for the good and against the bad. Duh, I, just in case, I just thought I'd better say that. But here's the thing, as when whatever this ends up looking like, what it means is what we've hoped in is almost here. Almost here. So here's the question for today, this weekend. What sort of faith will it take? What's it look like? How can I tribulation-proof my faith, as it were? Right? That's what Peter says. If, if, all the, if this is going to be the way it is, then what kind of person should you be? That's the question, right? Like, like um, you, you know the phrase, I asked a guy who was in the Navy this last Friday, you know that phrase, batten down the hatches? You know that? You know, anybody heard that? Like, that's like a ship about to go into a storm, and so you batten down the hatches. Um, I think there's a whole language called Navy, right? I think. You guys in the ex-Navy, am I right? There's a whole, like, but apparently, now this, is, this is Ed, the non-Navy guy, but this is what I think I've heard. There's, on a ship, there's doors, right? And then the flat ones where they open up are called hatches. Am I right about that? Yes? Is that right, Dennis? All right. Just say I'm right, even if I'm not. All right. So, and so what that means is that when a ship's about to go through a storm, you got to make sure all that stuff is closed up and like the, the deals are all dealyized. You know what I mean? It's my Navy, the Slipknot. Do you know what I mean? The Fort Square the, on the starboard side. So, the, right? So here's how you tri tribulation proof your faith. There's, four, four, there's a million steps. There's four that I think are like, duh. One is you got to get your roots in Christ. You got to get, listen, there's just no other way about this. You, we got to get serious. We got to get serious about growing in our faith, not treat it as like a nice add on. Well, you know, if I get around to it, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'd love to read the Bible, but you know, I'm so, I'm so busy. It's just uh, crazy. And as soon as I'm done watching this Netflix series, I will get, I am so on it. Yes, I'll join a small group. Absolutely. But, we, you know, we're going to binge that tonight. And then, of course, it's Thursday's pizza night. So I can't do that. But, you know, it, this, this is Jesus. He's given this parable. And he says, okay, there's, he talks about seed, the gospel being seed. And he says, there's a kind of seed. And here's what it does. It's the, the one seed is the one on whom the seed was sown on rocky places and the man who hears, he, he, this is the guy who hears the word and immediately he's like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, yeah, 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 I'm a Christ follower. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but he's only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises, notice Jesus says when, not if, because of the word, he immediately falls away. Now see, it's one thing to just go through the trials of life but it's another thing to suffer specifically for being a Christ follower, 
for the word. And here's the question. I mean, and I'm asking me, this isn't me going, oh, you crazy people. I'm saying, listen, I, I'm gonna ask myself this question and I'm gonna say, all right, do I have tribulation proof faith? And one of the qu questions is, are my roots deep in Jesus? Here's why we have the discipleship pathway. First step is just the first step on that, right? It's like, and here's why we do our journey and, and Transformation Weekend and all these classes and small groups and all this stuff on the pathway is this, so you can get your roots down deep. We're trying to like facilitate this for you. You with me? All right, here's number two on tribulation. Now you could say, eh, I don't wanna do that. Well, okay, and maybe you don't believe this, and, and that's one thing. But if you're going, okay, dude, I, I'm a Bible person. I believe that. All right, then get your roots down in Christ and get your relationships connected in church with the body of Christ. Relationship, connection. Amen. Listen, isolation is deadly. A lot of what's happening right now, it's mostly males and it's mostly young people who this shutdown we had, it affected them in, it just, this is partly brain developmental stuff in ways that is, we're really paying the price for. And here's the deal. Don't let yourself get isolated from healthy Christ-centered community. You, you need it to, to be okay. Listen, you know the part about getting your roots down in Christ? It, it, it is impossible. Listen to this. It is impossible to mature as a Christ follower in isolation. Now, you need solitude. That's one of the spiritual disciplines. You need time alone with God personal like prayer and stuff like that. But without like relationship, you won't mature. Here's number three. So, and this is some high level preaching here. Notice they all start with R. That's really cool, right? Have you noticed that? You're gonna be, you're gonna be dazzled by the end. It goes, surely he can't come up with another R word. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. I'm gonna show you right now. I'm flexing on you a little bit. This is, here it is, restraint or resistance to the world. You, listen, here's the deal. This one, we gotta start practicing now. You can't wait till it's really, the world is more hostile than it is now. You gotta start building up your resistance now. It's like if you're taking you know, a medication to keep you from getting a virus or whatever, you better start taking it before you walk into a room and breathe a mouthful of that stuff, right? You gotta start building up your resistance. And so build your resistance now to the world. Jesus said, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and they will show signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. There's like a whole thing now of people going, yeah, I don't know, like, there, my foundation for my faith is, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna deconstruct this and re, it's like, like bro, where, where have you been? See, one of the things that makes the tribulation, the tribulation, as just opposed to tribulation, is that there will be an onslaught of deception and you're going, is that what's happening now? It's like, I'm not sure and I, I don't know, but here's what I'll say. It's way easier to imagine it now than it was just a few years ago, isn't it? Like an onslaught of craziness where you go, wait, which end is up anymore, right? Here's the other thing that this resistance to the world means and when, to be tribulation proof your faith is it means that it's not about just your deception, but it's about our desires. Like make sure that, the, that, that your ultimate desires aren't possessed by the world and you're hoping to get something from them. As long as somebody has what you want or think you must have, they have power over you. If you need their approval, if you need somebody's like to kick down to you, if you, if you imagine that it is your job that provides for you 
and you don't understand that it is God who is providing for you through your job, you're going to have, this is, that's not tribulation proof faith. Does that make sense? All right. Here's the last one and the most obvious one. And yes, it will begin with R. All right. You got to take refuge in Jesus. Send lawyers, guns, and money, right? The, you know, it's going to hit the fan. Like, so what, what do you do? You take refuge in Jesus. There is only one, there, there's only one kind of person that in the end is going to be okay. And that's the person that has trusted Jesus. And here's the great thing. You can trust him right now. You can trust him when, when things are good. You can trust him when things are bad. Listen, when things are good, he will make your life better better. You're, you're going to go past the thing that, you're, that you enjoy to the person, to the actual provider of all good things. And when you've lost all of that, which you inevitably will, when you lose your stuff or your health or your friends or your loved one, he'll be the only one that can get to that part of you and help you through those times. So take refuge in him. The storm is, I mean, win, lose, or draw, right? The storm is coming. Whether it is the storm or just another storm, you need Jesus. You need refuge. You need shelter. So uh, let's, we're going to worship right now. Why don't you stand? Why don't you close your eyes? You can take it. If you want. And if you, maybe this is a moment where you can put your trust in Jesus. You can ask him to save you, to deliver you from evil, to change your destiny. Here's what I did when I was in this moment, like you're, some of you're in right now. I said, I said this prayer. I said, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and that that somehow was for me and that that can forgive my sins and give me a new start. So I am welcoming you, inviting you into my life so that you can be the Lord, the new Lord boss of my life. That little step of faith right there doesn't sound like much, but when God unleashes the power of forgiveness and grace in your life, you will find it beginning to transform you like nothing you've ever experienced. So we invite you to do that. And the rest of us, let's start even now build, building our resistance to the world by placing our affection and our love towards Jesus as we worship right now. Let's get after it.
this morning. If you need prayer, our prayer team is over here. They would love to partner with you and pray over you. Happy Sunday. We'll see you next week.